Welcome back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let us start our uh, session again. Uh, in the next one hour, I will uh, use this uh, session to discuss in detail uh, the newly approved document by RSPO. Uh, on RSPO management system requirements and guidance for group certification of FFB production. This was endorsed by the BOG on the 7th of March 2016. It's quite a mouthful title of the document, but I always say group certification. But when we, whenever I mention or say group certification, it refers to this document, yeah? Now, before we start, I want to ask, because uh, immediately after the approval by the BOG, we uploaded this document in the website. Have you seen it other than the one that sent by Eileen before this training? Huh? Oh, no. Why? Huh? You didn't receive. Eileen, did you send the document to... Receive but not read. Sorry? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. That is the, the question, but the, the document itself. Receive. Oh, okay. Yes. Ayo, what a threatening statement. Matai <laughs> Powerful can can immediately read <laughs> traceable traceable. Our luckily our IT is not traceable, so we wouldn't know. Anyway, you were saying that you have seen it, but you have not read it. Okay, never mind. So let us through, go through this uh, slowly. Um, my intention here is not to kind of you know suggest uh, changes to be made to this document, but more of socializing this to every one of us here as a replacement to the previous group certification standard of RSPO. Yeah? So this is more of socializing this document, that now we have this document for us to refer to. Before I start, I want to share with you a little bit about the background when this document been revised. What happened was RSPO was thinking or having this situation of how do we facilitate certification of all uh, oil palm producer. So in general, we see that there are two types of producer: those who have mill, and we also have quite a significant amount of producers who doesn't have mill. And if you look at the definition, we also have this outgrower, we have small holder, we have scheme, we have independent, we have um, associated, we also have uh, independent mill. So when you look at it, there are potentially 15 scenarios of certification scenarios involving estates, scheme, small holders, group independent small holders and outgrower. I believe this is familiar to many of you. There are situations where you find estate and mill and there are presence of scheme smallholder, there are presence of group independent smallholder, there are presence of outgrow with more than 50 hectares in one location. Right? And it is not uh, impossible that there are also an area only group independent smallholder. Currently, the overview that we have is the world is so ideal that you only f see this exist in isolation. But the reality is not. The reality on the ground is there are these 15 situations. There are estate and mail, and they simply don't have anything next to them. So this one is ideally the PNC certification would be ideal, right? So if you think back of the document uh, of the template that I show you just now, 
It requires you to fill up all this, actually. So you need to think, who are the producers in that area? Do you have scheme? Do you have group? Do you have uh, outgrow situation? So that will help you to fill up that template, yeah? So we are actually not just looking at this, coming up with a group certification document. We are not just looking into this. We are looking into this group also. We are looking into this group also. Currently, we are looking at this, and we come up with some rules on this, which I will talk later. So um, this is uh, estate and mill. There's another potential certification scenarios involving independent mills. So we also have presence of independent mill. And they have scheme smallholders nearby. They also have independent smallholders. They also have outgrowers nearby. So what would be the type of scheme certification that is suitable to these groups? It's good to see these uh, scenarios. You as a CB, I believe you have gone through this. <laughs> yeah. Now, with this in mind, I think the document has been revised to make it inclusive to all producers, oil palm producers, be it mills with uh, smallholders or a grower or smallholders um, and mills. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, all these scenarios around. But the scheme, the group certification document and the PNC certification standard, uh, the two type of certification system uh, by RSPO should be able to cater all palm oil producers within RSPO. We don't have the intention to come up with another new things, uh, certification scheme. So that uh, happened, I think, in 2015, the decision to, 2014, uh, the decision to revise the document. Um, it went through two rounds of public consultation uh, of 60 days in each public consultation, uh, physical meeting to gather inputs from the public or specific Stakeholders were conducted in Kuala Lumpur, in, in, in Jakarta, in Quito, in Colombia, in Accra, and also in uh, Cote d'Ivoire to gather all these uh, inputs plus 60, 120 days uh, inputs um, during the public consultation. And I believe some of you have also participated in the previous CB meeting to discuss and provide inputs to this document. So this is the fruits of the work that you, you, you have done uh, also. Uh, it was endorsed uh, on 7 March 2016. Uh, the document was developed based on the international best practices according to the ICL Code of Conduct, uh, Code of Practices. Now, this is very important. This is very, very important. I want you to leave this room end of today with this being very, very clear in, the, in your mind that the group certification document, the applicability of it is only for producers below 50 hectares that can use all the section one, two, and three. Whereas the other growers, any, any individual farmers or producers, that having more than 50 hectares can use this group certification system, but only for section one and two, whereas the have to demonstrate compliance, the full PNC minus requirements for meals for section three. And uh, besides this uh, document, we also have developed a frequently asked question that should come along and together with the document as your reference. Any questions so far before I move to that uh, document? 
Belum ada. Okay. So the document has three key sections, main sections: section one, section two, and section three. And also it has two annexes. Annex one is on the terms and definition. Annex two is list of documents to be developed required to comply with RSP or PNC. I will discuss more on section one only. I think the section two and se section three is familiar to many of you because the previous group certification standards is more or less of this content. What is it in the section A, uh, section one? Section one talks about scope and applicability. It covers the system requirement for group management. Okay, this document covers the system requirement for group management and the requirement of group manager and individual group members to demonstrate compliance with the RSP or PNC 2013. So these are the three things that are very clear in the document. System requirement, requirement for group manager, and requirement for individual group members. And it is applicable to all groups of independent growers who seek certification of their FFB. So if you are to certify, you are only producing FFB, this should be the document that you use. This document is relevant for group manager, individual group member, and auditor. The guidance for auditor is clearly spelled in the document as well. The unit of certification shall be the group manager and 100% of group members. So I think I already emphasized on this part. This is very crucial. Uh, at this point of time that this document is actually limited to this threshold of 50 hectares, a small hold only. So section one, section two, section three. So if you have any producers that having more than 50 hectares as individual producer, then you have to follow or refer to the full PNC minus mail requirement. Um, independent smallholder and outgrowers. Oh, don't look at the title, yeah, but then the, it, it refers to a structure of group entity. They, it must have these three things. It must have group manager, uh, it must have this ICS, internal control system, it must have members, and these are the entity that the CB would be auditing. So this is also explained in the uh, section one of the document. Now, Previously, previously, we used to have this generic guidance for scheme smallholder, and we also have this generic guidance for independent smallholder. Now it's become obsolete. We have now merged it into same document. So even scheme and associated smallholder who wants to go for certification also will refer to this, no longer referring to that generic guidance for scheme smallholder okay clear now for the scheme smallholder yeah since 7 march 2016 for scheme smallholder to go for certification you're given two options there are two options for scheme smallholder be certified the option one is to be certified as part of the PNC certification system uh, standard and the scheme smallholder are part of this supply base. So this is the business as usual, okay? Business as usual, where you certify your scheme smallholder in the past. But when you are to refer, the requirement for the individual in the scheme smallholder, then you can use the section three of this document if they are below 50 hectares. Okay? That's clear. The option two is meal also can use 
group certification to certify the scheme small holder. But there are conditions to this. There are conditions to this if they are to use group certification. Priority for males to certify the scheme smallholder is using this one. So we hope CB can advise plantation who have scheme smallholder to continue and remain use this approach to certify scheme smallholder using the PNC, the business as usual. The generic, the what? Generic what? We don't have smallholder PNC. No, that become obsolete now. We only look at PNC 2013 as the mother document, right, for PNC certification for meals to refer to. And then for smallholder now that this is endorsed, this is it. The rest now are becoming obsolete. Even NI to develop guidance for the smallholder will have to use this. They should start from now, as soon as this document has been endorsed. So your question is, is the document for Indonesia still valid or not? Yes, we have the, gen we have the 2013 generic. But not, yes, and when we, uh, this is a group certification. Eh? We also have the scheme smallholder PNC, if I'm not mistaken. So, for the group certification that you mentioned, or a scheme or associates more are certified as part of the mill. So, you have to use the generic standard or 2013 PNC. Or, we actually, we have the latest, but not the newest, the for scheme smallholder PNC. But on the on the RSPO website, if you mention when we audit for the scheme smallholder. No, I mean, what is it? Seventh of March. Yeah. Okay. Um, so since last month, the situation is as follows, and I have a question on that for you, uh, Julia. By the way, for scheme smallholders, you use this document. That's what's clearly said by Julia. Yeah. You use the PNC for the mill and its supply base, of course, and when the scheme smallholders are part of the supply base, the scheme smallholders should be audited against the content of section 1, 2, and 3 when they're less than 50 hectares. Correct? No. That's what you just said. No. If they are to certify under group certification, but if they are going for PNC certification, business as usual, they go through that, you know, we have this PNC certification where scheme smallholder is part of the supply base. They can use this plus section three of the group certification. As reference now for the smallholder. Now I see too many question marks here. <laughs> okay, I, I, I can understand because this is a little bit complex. So I think we will make use this forum to make it as clear as possible. Okay, okay, let's, okay let's, let's take it case by case. Um, you have to, uh, you know, reply on that, Julia. Okay. Uh, mill and a regular supply base, their owner states that is simple. That's PNC. We all know that. That's relatively easy. Okay. That is this one, yeah. That, that is this one. You no, know, yeah. without small, they don't have any small holders. Just their owner states. Mm. That's a relatively easy one. That's PNC, uh, national, and or an NI when there is an NI. Okay. Mm. Now this same mill has a group of smallholders. A number of smallholders, I should say, which, okay. yeah, which are scheme because they have a contract, they are, you know, they're linked to the oil mill, the, the oil mill helps them, etc., etc. So they're typically an example of scheme smallholders, associated plasma, as it is called in Indonesia. That's fine. Mm. Now the auditor comes. What does he do? When auditor come, uh, so first. It, it, it is the call of that owner of the certificate. Yeah? First, before the auditor come, the owner of the certificate need to decide which scheme he is going to. 
for PNC certification, for PNC certification, the mill should be deciding, should be should decide that I want to go for audit certification, my mill, and my unit of certification will include the scheme smallholder and the process of getting the scheme smallholder to be certified is PNC certification, which will include the scheme smallholders. We are no longer using the generic guidance in the past, so what we are doing is allowing company who is going for PNC certification to refer to the section three in this document for their smallholders. So it's, that's what I mean by business as usual, PNC certification, which to include scheme smallholder as part of its supply base. But it has to, so would the scheme smallholders have to be audited against section three of the new document? Meaning to say, yeah, yeah. When they do the, because when, when the uh, scheme smallholders are included as part yeah, yeah, of yeah, the yeah. scheme, yeah. they are also have to have sample. Yeah. And what are they going to be against to it? Will be this one. Will be section three. Mm -hmm. Is that clear? Exactly. Yeah. No. Hello, I have a question. If a mill is applying to certification and that mill has, let's say, two farms that are owned by the mill company, but also they have, let's say, 40 uh, small holders that are one hectare, two hectares, five hectares, 10 hectares, then what I thought is that just the principle and criteria 2013 applies, but of course you visit the square root of those small holders on their farms and the whole PNC 2013 criteria and indicators applied to those small holders. Well, Sorry, one minute. Let it, me it, is, it, is, it is the right question. Um, you know, the, the mill and the regular supply base, that's, that's everybody understands, there's no problem. Now there is indeed, you know, a, 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 a number of smallholders linked to the mill. Mm -hmm. So it's not a group, but a number of smallholders. So the question of auditors is, how should they be audited? Against what standard and what kind of sampling should be yeah. taken over those 40 or whatever the number of smallholders is? That's the question. To you. Okay, no, I, I still go back to the principle that RSBO has these two schemes of certification. One is the PNC, which also allows scheme smallholder to be part of the supply base in it. And if they are going for that, for, the, for, 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 for company to be certified under PNC certification, then the reference for the scheme smallholders in that because now we are no longer using that previous generic guidance for scheme smallholder. So the reference is this document, but they will only be referring to section three on the PNC requirement. Okay? Yeah. That is for PNC certification. The thing is, with this new document, we are also allowing company subject to clarity on the resources and uh, capacity of the meal and it links with the uh, smallholders of the supply base that they are working with, we also allow them to, for company to certify the group using group certification following section one, two, and three. Yes, but in the case of the meal that has contracts with those uh, smallholders, when in the contract they give technical assistance and the smallholders should give the fresh fruit bunches to that particular mill and they are included on the P and C certification of that mill, what I have done, I don't know if it's correct, but I think it is correct. I take a sample of those smallholders, the number of smallholders, and I visit the square root of the smallholders and I apply the entire P and C to the smallholders. That's correct. 
That is, I mean, that, that's, that's correct. But the, what Julia is saying, for that certification, you have to use the generic PNC or a national interpretation if it is there, plus section three of this, uh, the group management, the, okay. the group systems document. Yeah? So it's the PNC plus section three. Since when? Since 7th, 7th March? 7th March. Okay, I haven't done any audit after so March 7th. This, so from I the 7th of March, and there will be a grace period, I guess, 12 for 12 months. So you don't I have to... Have a look at the document and then... Yeah, yeah so you have... More you than have, happy I mean, to spend more time with you no, there is after the, this. There is a grace period, obviously, but um, you have to use the PNC plus section 3 of this document okay. for certifying a mill, a state, and scheme Team. associated plasma, whatever you want to call it, smallholders. Okay, thanks. Yeah? The discussion about group smallholders in itself is a different discussion. Different world. Is that clear? But is that I now? Yeah. Well, I see still, I mean, I'm not sure whether. Well, I, I would also like to emphasize that in the past we also received this command from stakeholders saying that the current way of certifying scheme smallholders. If we are just using the PNC certification, limits the opportunity for company actually to bring more scheme smallholders to be certified. So this document allows that, but there is a condition. There's a condition. You need to really determine what is the level of capacity and resources of the meal as well as the group that you are supporting. Uh, in moving towards certification. So that is available in that document itself as well as in the FAQ. Yes, Robert. Now I have a quick look into this section three of this document, mm. which is more or less actually the same as what is stated down in the PNC. Yes. Will this be actually a repeated work for the auditors? Is this repeatable? Yes, this is a repeated work for the auditors to fill in again on this nature of these requirements under this section three? What do you mean by repeated work? When you look at the, some of the check, the checklist here, mm -hmm. it is more or less already been addressed in the main PNC checklist. Yeah, so but then this is tackle? considering the reality of smallholders. The PNC is for big companies. For the smallholders, if you are to audit group smallholders, you need to have look into this. How can we apply the checklist for big plantation to the smallholder? This is the, this, this is the main concern of, uh, upper, uh, of, 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 of our smallholders. Do we have to have a separate checklist developed for just this, the scheme or association of outgrowers in relations, in addition to the current PNC? That's reports? it. That's the generic. That's the generic. I really encourage you guys to really go through it before, before you know, because this is actually a way to, to provide support and guidance as much as we can to CB actually. It's not adding additional job, but without that, then RSP will be receiving again, what is your guidance for us to do this? What is the standard that we will use to, to audit uh, smallholders, for example? That's, that's my comment. You have uh, something to say. I have to direct back these questions to Jan again. Do we have to revamp the entire checklist? For smallholders, yes, we do. That's the checklist. We can come up with a checklist. Okay. Uh, can we move on? Uh, is this clear? This, these two options. Remember, yeah, we are no longer using the generic guidance for smallholders and the general guidance for independent smallholder S that approved in 2010 and 2009. What about, what about the, the national interpretations for those smallholders in countries that have been developed like in Thailand or Indonesia? Uh, are we going to follow that national interpretations or are we going to use these generic documents for the smallholders audit now? In our announcement, this is the generic guidance for smallholder NI are encouraged to develop their specific guidance for their smallholders in the country within 12 months. Otherwise, they have to follow to this. 
which one? So, yeah, we, we give them grace period of 12 months to allow them to still refer to the previous uh, guidance. Yes. So, can I ask uh, one question related to the scheme smallholder scheme in Indonesia, like example KKPA. KKPA is fully managed by the company, by estate, no managed by smallholder. So we need still use these two checklists for the RSPO PNC generic standard 2013 and group certification for KKPA? We use generic generic PNC 2013 to certify this P, this what is that TTPA KKPA okay we use this generic uh, no it's not generic it's supposed to be but sorry uh, I, I, sorry sorry Ina, I Ina is not yet there yeah uh, sorry I repeat so my we use generic PNC 2013 but when you are to audit the scheme smallholders in that KKPA, you use section 3 of this document. So what's different? Because they were 100% managed by company, by Sorry? state. Sorry? It KK is managed, yes. Yeah, KKPA in Indonesia. Have you seen the document actually? Have you seen what it says in the document? What it means? What it means to... So, uh, in Indonesia, scheme, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think there is two uh, scheme in Indonesia for the scheme smallholder. Yeah. We call plasma and KKPA. Different. KKPA and, and plasma is different. Okay. KKPA is totally 100% managed by company. Farmer no do anything for this. But plasma, yes. So for this KKPA, we still use this for the group certification to audit them. If we use, so that means we repeat it. Because okay. same. Okay, KKPA. KKPA is uh, are they, uh, smallholders or the company is the one who is managing A to Z. For example, let me go back to Felda, for example, Felda Cash. Felda, they have this, what is it, the uh, chicken? FGVEL? Technoplan and? Sir? Felda Management. So, Felda Management. In general, we think FELDA is scheme smallholders because it's a government program, okay? But if you look at FELDA, they have company-run plantation that manage 100%. They also have a group of producers, scheme smallholders, but the scheme are not working actually on the plantation. They hire workers uh, manage 100% uh, by the plant uh, company. And there are also another group within Felda, which is the farmers themselves, is working there and hiring workers for them. So there are three categories. Which one is that? Second one, where they own the land, but the company is running this things. So in that case, then you are using PNC 100% PNC 2013. Yeah, that's what I mean. But where you, when you are having schemes more hollow, is who is managing the land themselves. For example, in the case of uh, PNG, Papua New Guinea, in Solomon Island, where the farmers are the one managing the land itself, but they are contracted with the mill, then you use the section three. Yep. Thank you for finally <laughs> happy. <laughs> where already <there? laughs> Okay, good. All right, so. Anyway, the bottom line is actually to help company to allow more ways to bring scheme smallholder to be certified. Previous, yes. I am sorry, but I am confused. Okay, Never mind. Let us okay. in that uh, a scenario that the smallholders in the Salomon Island or I don't know where managed their own land, but they have a contract to deliver the fresh fruit bunches to the mill, is Section 3 plus PNC on the smallholders? Because they have contract with the mill. Exactly. Okay. But you told me no. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, okay. No, it's clear. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. 
Julia, yes. one other question. Is there any difference whether one of the smallholders or two of the smallholders have more than 50 hectares? Yeah. In that situation, then they will fo follow full PNC. Do you hear that? In particular, in Latin America. That's what I thought, that's why I'm asking. When smallholders have land more than 50 hectares, scheme smallholders I'm talking about, they should follow the full PNC 2013. So they basically more or less exempted from that the other smallholders who have less than 50 hectares. Now it's not so much an issue here in Malaysia and Indonesia, but I know in Latin America it is an issue. That's why I'm asking you. Okay, because a lot of smallholders have there more than 50 hectares, and still called smallholders. Where here would say, well, what do you mean small? Um, so there is a difference there in different parts of the world. Then section three apply for the small ones, and if they are above 50, they are extended from section three. If they are above 50, they follow PNC, full PNC. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So you have to use uh, two different standards, if you like, yeah. Okay, so that is the explanation for the scheme and associate smallholders. I hope this is clear, but don't, uh, don't, feel hesitant to come back to us anytime uh, to ask for clarification if you still need more. Now, that is for the scheme smallholder. For the independent group, then this will be the, this will be the uh, structure uh, of, of, no, no, cannot. I, I mean, the, 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 the structure should be The structure would be you have group manager, you have members, and you have uh, ICS. And you will follow section one, two, and three. But even if in the independent group, independent smallholders, if you have members who have more than 50 hectares, they will follow full PNC. All right? Now, this is the simplified uh, certification scenarios. Um, just just to help us to understand uh, a, a bit easier uh, we, we we may want to ask is the producer a meal with on estate plantations if this if it is say yes then you should be you, you should choose a pnc certification if it is no you are allowed to go for group certification but the option is in terms of group manager, who is going to be the group manager? If the meal makes management decision, the meal must be the group manager. Must be the group manager. Yeah? If for certain reason and justified, the meal cannot become the group manager, and they have to appoint uh, their own group manager, then it, this also can be done. But otherwise, they need to be the group manager. Yeah? Meal has to be the group manager, but they have option whether to, to, to be certified under the PNC or the group certification. And then further up, if the size of the land of this individual grower is more than 50 hectares, yes, then follow this one. If no, if it's below 50 hectares, then you follow section three, right? Hmm? Yep. Yeah. Where? Where PNC? Yeah, but then we, we, are, we are just focusing on smallholder, yeah? The PNC is for the meals. 
Okay, now uh, I did mention that uh, we also have this um, section in the, I mean, we put that in the, in the document as well as in the FAQ. Um, The examples of um, certification scenarios for smallholders and outgrower with degrees. Uh, with With different degrees of male involvement. I'm not going into detail, you can read this in the FAQ as well as in the document, but what these documents try to show here is um, th this is a matrix actually. Matrix, just now I mentioned about the capacity and resources of the groups and the male, and you know they have this interlink uh, relationship. Uh, between the growers and the mill. So in a situation where the mill with supply best has management control on the planted area and can enforce decision on growers and the operation and the, the growers have capacity and resources for certification. So it should be PNC certification, similar to this one because this has complete control of the, 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 the supply base. So no way we should go for uh, PNC, yeah? I think the BOG is very, very strict on this that in whatever possible way, group managers should use, go for the PNC certification. And if they have to go for group certification, a way of certification, then the mill must be the group manager. Um, the, these are the associated document to the, to the, to the, to the document as well. Uh, RSP or PNC certification system, supply chain certification standard, code of conduct, ECOP, NPP, and also remediation and compensation. So meaning to say as an auditor, apart from looking at the requirements, section one, two, three, you also need to look uh, that the groups are meeting this requirement. Um, so that is the section one, which I said I would like to spend more time because I think the decision is so important for all of us to know. And if you have uh, more questions on that, I'm more than happy to, 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 you know, to, to talk with you and to provide clarification. Section two talks about requirement for group certification system. There are three elements there, E1, E2, and E3. It talks about group entity and group management requirement, uh, the internal control system, policies and management, and the internal control system in terms of operation. So uh, I think this is a very straightforward, similar to the previous one, which, with, with some uh, clarity and further improvement put in. And the section three is guidance for compliance with the RSP or PNC 2013. So I just want to emphasize that the guidance uh, in, this, in this section, you will, say, you will see that the principles, the criteria, and the indicators are something that already cast in stone for everyone. No, no, nothing has been changed there. The principles remain, remain the same. The criteria remains the same, the indicator remains the same. What been added there is the guidance and the requirement for group manager and also for group members. It's very, very clear in that document. And also guidance for auditors. Right? Now, uh, this, will, this document, since it's been uh, endorsed, 
effective immediately from the date of approval and a given uh, 12 months grace period will be the generic document for all FFB producers and um, all RSPOP and national interpretation will be required to use this document for the development of the smallholder guidance and meantime can still refer to the previous one within this grace period. But RSPO Secretariat will be in contact with the NI task force in the respective region to do this, to, the, to develop this uh, NI guidance for smallholder in the respective, in the, in the, in the, in the respective region or countries. Yeah. And any assessment of FFB production without meal conducted after 7 March 2017 must be in compliance to this new requirement. This and those documents replace the following documents. So, we are no longer using this one. The new document for group certification is this one. So, I mentioned just now, generic guidance for scheme smallholder, generic guidance for independent smallholder is no more uh, in use. It's all have been put here. And RSPO accreditation and certification requirement for group certification is also now become obsolete. But a new section under Annex 1 is now available in the group certification, no, in the certification system, RSPO certification system draft, which we discussed on the first day. Look into that under Annex 1 as reference. That's all. Yeah, for group certification. Okay, this uh, 12 month grace period. So, actually, what RSPO looking at CBs, how they should implement this 12 month grace period? How? How CBs should implement this 12 month grace period? Immediately use, or is it compulsory to after 12 month only, or any they have any choice to use the previous? Well, my personal answer to that, <laughs> I would say. Oh, you want to answer first? Okay, my personal answer to that, is, to that is, I would say that this document, a lot of group managers, independent group managers who are aspiring to go for certifications, looking forward to have this, because this document is much simpler as compared to the previous way of certification for small. They are looking forward to do this and use this uh, as, 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 you know, standard that they go for certification. Uh, but this is generic. When it comes to, and they can use it immediately, to answer your question, they can use this immediately. But when there are situations where, the, yo, what is that? Okay. Okay. No one. When there is a specific requirement, for example, in the case of MYNI, assuming the definition is 40 hectares, 40 hectares they define as small holders. So, which one you want to follow? This will be based on the MYNI uh, interpretation or use this one. That is, I think, the option, the call by the CB. CB. Why? Oh, ASI. <laughs> no, yes, no, Jan, no, you no, want to? Gray, okay, grace period will, I mean, means in general that, you know, it's a choice. Within the next 12 months, after 7th March last month, you have a choice. And typically, as a CB, you'll take the choice together with your client. You know, if it is an ASA, <coughs> Some clients, let's say, if an ASA it comes up next month, a lot of clients will say, well, we use the, the ones we know. Yeah, because this is a new document, I have to read it, I have to prepare myself on it, etc., etc. As Julia said, there may be some group managers saying, well, okay, you know, this is easy. Um, this is easier than the previous one. You know, I'm going to have an audit next month. 
I want to be audited against a new standard. That's fine. That's it's a choice between CB and client. You know, but you have 12 months. It basically, it means after 12 months, no choice. So I have second question, but this one, so Laszlo from ASI. So uh, if Laszlo can help us to clarify how ASI will interpret this 12-month grace period and what it expected from the CBs. I will interpret what? Interpret this 12 months grace period. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the answer to be honest. Um, we, need to, we need to talk with our SPA about it. I don't know. Well, I don't understand the question, but anyway. Um, so the implementation from the CBs because they're going to see the 12 month how we are implementing the transition, how it is implemented. So, what is the expectation? Because we need to know also in, in order to implement this. But it is with okay. But it is with every new standard in RSPO what we have had over the last I don't know how many years. Yeah, there is a grace period. That means in that grace period, there is a choice to use the old standard, if you like, or the new standard. Yeah, we've had it with SEC. We had it with PNC. We now have it with small. We have it, you know, we have it all the time. There's a grace period. In this case, the grace period is 12 months, and it means within 12 months, starting 7th March last month that there is a choice using the old standard or the new standard. So if ASI will come to accredit you from one of the ASAs and they will look at, you know, by coincidence, by, you know, to one of those um, uh, audits, they will ask, you know, which standard did he use? And then you will say, well, it's the old standard. And they will check, is it still within the 12 months? Okay, fine. And you say, it's a new standard. Is it within the 12 months? That's fine. But after the 7th March 2017, no choice. You must, must use this document. Yes, I think that's generally correct. Um, I think we would also probably look at, for new applicants, I think we would expect you to implement the new version because there's no point to implementing an old version and then from the middle of next to from next year to with the new version and I think we would like to see some sort of effort from your side on how you're going to implement and roll out the new version so I think that's the general answer so I think as Jan said for uh, existing ones you would have a choice um, even though we would probably ask you if the next surveillance is beyond the sort of the um, 12 months after the approval date, how you're going to make sure that your certificate holders are complying. Yes? Because this is, I mean, is this, uh, so the question here, do they have to be compliant or is it just the? I think the question is, we allow 12 months grace period. So what does it mean? How do ASI interpret that? So I think the clarification provided by um, Jan uh, explains that it allows CB or you, you know the group to also still use <coughs> the old one within this time. Now, can I say something about this? Yes. If I look into in the systematic approach, just like any ISO 9000 system change at present now, like for example, 9001 is going to 2015 versions. There's also a grace period for you for the user system users to change to the 2015 in a three years transition period. And likewise, the CB has to adopt this holding within the three years grace period. Looking at this now, that 
both the user and the CVs has to adopt the whole damn document within one year. That is the bottom line. There's no forward, no way going backwards or the going forward is to adopt it within these 12 months from 7 March until 6 March 2017. After that, 2017 onwards, this applies. That's what I interpret it. No matter how, we still have to change. Mm. Either now or by 2017. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Uh, that's correct. Yeah. But right. as yeah. you know, but you as a CB have a responsibility there as well. That you know, let's assume that you're auditing tomorrow a company with smallholders. That you tell them, you know, hey guys, yes, today it is, you know, we're going to audit you against this standard. But mind you, if we come back in a year's time, you know, this is the one. So you better prepare yourself on that. And of course, you know, the that's your responsibility as an auditor to warn them for that, that this new standard is coming, is being published, and they have to prepare themselves on that. And I do agree with, with Laszlo that if you're going to have a audit uh, next month with a, for a new mill, and um, there are smallholders involved as, as well, that you will ask the mill, are you sure you want to be still audited against the present old standard? Are you sure? Because you know there is a new standard already published, so you may want to choose for the new standard already, rather than for your initial audit, you know, doing the old standard and for the first annual surveillance audit the new standard. But again there, it is your responsibility as an auditor, as a CB, to warn your customers that this is coming. Well, we need to clarify. Do certificate holders have to be compliant? And, and we had this conversation with the new version of um, uh, which standard? Uh, anyways, there, there was, I think, two years ago a discussion with one of the other standards. So we need to clarify, do certificate holders have to be compliant with sev that 7th of March 2015 with the new requirements, which would be our reading? And then the question is, what happens with the surveillance audits that are after this date in 2017. So for example, if a CB now conducts a surveillance audit in June, in June they can still use the old or the new version. The next surveillance is in June 2017. So the question is, is that okay or not okay? So there is going to be a gap between March and June when the certificate holders might not be compliant. So our, as I said in usually, what you would expect, you give a date and you say by two, March 2017, everybody has to be compliant with the new version. That means that there isn't really sort of a grace period because people will have to start to implement the new standard now. Okay, I understand. I mean, I'm not going to. I mean, it's very close to splitting hairs, but I understand no, no, where you. No, 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 I know. No, I know. Not no, 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 no. Absolutely don't, not. I don't. I'm not denigrating it. No, no, no. Don't get me wrong on that. Any assessment of FFP production, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, after 20, uh, 7 March 2017, must be com must be done against the new standard. That means formally, you're right that all the companies, all companies must be compliant the 7th March 20, 2018. If yes, you take okay. it, that's yes. So that we That's need correct. So, okay. Like I said, I mean, formally you're 100% right. Okay, because we had these discussions with uh, yeah, yeah. CBs. Um, I think about the supply chain standard. Yeah. Because that was, yeah. yeah. Because that was changed two years ago, yeah. Okay, so basically we are saying that between March 2016 and March 2017, Team CBs can choose whichever standard to work with. Yeah. After March 2017, CBs will have to use the new standard. The new standards. But if they have conducted an audit in February 2017 using the old version, that's still okay. Oh, correct. Correct. And that company of, of formally will be only compliant at February 2018 against the new. Correct. Yes, okay. Now I see where you're coming from. Okay, correct. I see some action point there. Maybe I can, we'll, we'll come up with some announcement on this <coughs> yes, uh, to be aided for, be just to clarify our, to everybody yeah, and to clarify. avoid 
the yeah. arguments between me and Happy to do that. Tutti and uh, and. Uh, Okay, we are done actually for this uh, part. Ah, Sheila. Sorry, just uh, just to clarify, when you refer to the old standards, what are you referring to? Um, just for everyone's clarity, for example, in the Malaysian context, the old standards are NY 2008 NI. Malaysian NI with NY smallholder NI inclusion with smallholders. 2008, yeah? So we're already in 2013, Malaysia and I. So I just want to make that clear. Yeah, is that? That has the smallholder. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Moving forward. Uh, okay. Yes. I want to ask about uh, one thing about the... In Indonesia, uh, there is an uh, estate owned by individual. Maybe they own, let's say, 600 <coughs> hectares. So if they want to be certified, they can go to, let's say, the group certification and then they just go to the mill under supply based mill because they are, they are called estate. But the own the land is individual but they are registered in company like say PT in Indonesia we call PT lah we call PT but actually it's individual owner but don't have meal. they don't have meal okay. so they let's say they, so if they don't if they want to go to the uh, as supply base to the meal and then meal consider this as estate so they can go to the PNC generic 2013 or go to the group certification um okay one by one the 600 hectares it can go for certification using this group certification yeah let's say 600 let's okay but but indonesia there is also they have let's say 1000 hectares mm. yeah let's say last 600 hectares mm. and then they are called the estate mm. but owner is individual but the register in the government is this PT company mm. and then they want to be certified mm. they can go to the as supply base uh, in the mill as estate or go to the group certification group certification group certification because they also can allow an outgrower what one outgrower to be certified under group certification using one two and PNC for this case section one section two and PNC minus mill requirement. So that Mr. X, owner of the 600. So how about they con if they consider is estate? They consider the. We, we consider that as outgrower, independent outgrower. I mentioned just now smallholder. You have 50 hectares and below. We cannot consider as company. Well, that is the establishment. How it is categorized in these respective countries. So it can be estate, it, but. To, to our certification system, we categorize them as outgrower without meal. I need to move forward, but I'll be happy to talk to you during break later. Okay, I would like to invite um, my friend, Ado. Very quick one. Okay. Is this document actually circulated to all the growers? Well, it is available on the website as soon as, as soon as it was approved. So it is available online. You are suggesting that this to be sent to all outgrowers. Okay. I mean, we will we will do that uh, through our outreach program. I want to move forward with uh, by inviting our who should who should we invite first, the group manager or the CB? What do you think? Let's let's hear from the group manager first, Sheila. Very happy to have her uh, to share with us what are the experience of a group manager going through audit um, and preparing smallholders actually uh, towards certification. Thanks.